with the game now centered around finding the right doe or getting lucky and locating a buck alone searching november 3rd sees caleb griner heading back to the same stand as the morning before same set that we put up two days ago here on this new permission farm. The reason I like this spot so much, I didn't really talk about it. We've got a few fingers that all connect down into a big chunk of timber. It's about three different fingers, one that goes out straight north and two that jet out to the west. But there's definitely main bedding and a lot of deer that stay out to our west. Or sorry, that's our east early this morning. Hanging in this oak, kicking our wind back to the southwest. But what we're trying to do is just get in between bedding, hunt pinches, and hope that one of these bucks gets off a doe and he's searching. See if we can find an angry one. Deer moving all around their stand, Caleb and Shay lock in, watching for signs of movement. That same morning, over 1,000 miles to the east, team member Kyle Lawrence is also hunting. Finding himself on the journey of being a new father, Kyle's priorities have shifted and up to this point, he saved his time on stand for the best time of the year. After spotting a good buck the afternoon prior, an adjustment is made and the setup is perfect. ridge over top of this river bottom that we were sitting down in yesterday and up here is where we saw um, that target eight buck with the broke g3 on him that's why we're up here today um brought a stand up in here with us doing a hanging hunt and hoping to catch him cruising again midday um, maybe he'll get on the doe that'll loop him through but hoping that some of these deer filter up through here it's almost like a pinch up here on top of this ridge so hopefully they're cruising today Down. He is down. 
30 yards? 30 yards from the tree, dude? Oh. Oh my god. Oh. Oh man. I can't believe it. Came right up this ridge. He was gonna circle up into the timber and I cried at him. Let's go. Oh man. Just climbing out at the base of the tree here, and uh, we saw him fall over. So I'm gonna come up here, grab my arrow, and just check out some of the blood. Alright guys, this is the broke G3 A point that you've heard me talk about for a couple weeks now. And uh, this morning was absolutely textbook. Um, got in about 8 o'clock, uh, made sure um, wife could get ready uh, for work, so I watched Easton and then slid in with the stand on my back. Popped up on that ridge where we had saw him yesterday. Um, he was in there way too many times not to come back through again cruising, so this morning he worked the edge of that hay field. I grounded at him, he ended up popping up in the woods, uh, coming right into 10 yards and just it made an absolute perfect shot. Um, ran about 25 yards and tipped over, so I couldn't be any happier. Uh, super stoked. Season's still early, but the rut's really popping off, guys. Um, good luck to everybody the rest of the season. Thank you for watching this way, Hill. Back on stand in southern Iowa, Caleb's still enjoying good deer action. Well, pretty slow morning, but bucks are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Just cruising this edge of this creek, in between the transition, soon looking for does. All these bucks are coming up this hillside or this trail right here in front of us to our left. They're coming up here 15, 20 yards, so it gives me a lot of confidence seeing a big buck out here. He's probably gonna come up the same trail and present a perfect opportunity. So I wanna get closer to where all this bedding is, to where all the action I would assume is gonna be. There's just more cover up that way and Shane and I were just talking, we need to go get a pole saw. There's a couple couple stands that are in some locust trees that have just locust thorns going everywhere. So hopefully we can get everything done. I gotta hang some stands for some other guys too. It's part of my work, so keep chugging along. As Caleb wraps up hanging the new stand, 130 miles to the northeast, Mike Reed's morning hunt is coming to a close. Positioned in a location nicknamed the Pond Set, Mike's mission was to lay eyes on the Fitzmagic buck for the first time this season. Though the camera missed it, Mike caught a brief glimpse of exactly what he was looking for. With the buck's direction of travel in mind, Mike and Rye decide to back out to get some work done and shoot a few arrows. Dialed in, Mike's back on the farm, heading to the infamous south plot, the same plot Rye tagged his biggest buck ever only a year before.
doe just came out. He's gonna come. There he is. There he is, about to come back out in the lane. an exciting start to the afternoon hunt. Ryan and I are on the same end of the farm that we were this morning. And we no sooner got in the stand than laid eyes on our target buck, Fitz Magic. We had a little one and a half year old Spike come chasing a doe by while we were getting set up. And the next thing you know, there he was. He, he kind of pushed those does around. One of those does must be pretty close because he stayed on her trail. I threw a few calls his way, grunt, snort, wheeze, he stopped. He looked very intently in this direction, but decided to turn and stay on that doe's trail and they went back up that strip of timber. It's a tough situation to try to call him away from her, but his body language was such that he wasn't very interested and we had a spike under us and other deer, so I didn't want to start banging the antlers together and scare everything. This spot is a spot we call the South Plot. It's a nice turnip plot. We got a little clover mixed in. And the deer naturally work their way out of the bedding through this plot off to the cut ag field. Our wind is a Southwest to West, switching to Northwest right at dark. So there's not a whole lot of spots that can accommodate all of that. This spot works out pretty well. It's nice to see him this twice today. So hopefully we can get another chance and get him in bow range. It was a fun afternoon. Non-stop action the whole time we were here. It's really cool to lay eyes on Fitzmagic again. Still right in this main area that he's, we've been getting pictures of him. I think we have a good chance of catching up with him. So we're gonna be back in here tomorrow. We're gonna hunt the Poseidon set. We've got a north wind. He seems to be going through that central timber every day, so. Hopefully we can get him in bow range tomorrow.
as you guys can see, you got a little close there right at the end. We were just talking, how many minutes do we have left till legal shooting? And I said five, and then I heard a deer coming out of the, the timber, and I couldn't quite tell what it was, but then he got in the food plot, and I was like, it's a, it's a pretty good buck. And finals on him, it was him. And then we heard another one coming out of that thicket in front of us. So I was a little buck, and I thought, man, this is gonna happen. He's gonna follow this little buck right to the base of the tree, but he just stared at that buck and then walked down the path. Only there to do that all night, walk the path out. Normally they cut the plot, go through the ditch, and go out to the standing ag that way. You know, and Rice said, we got enough camera light, so I let him get past us, and and grunted wants to stop him, and then snort wheezed at him, and he started pawing the ground, but, um, you know, unfortunately, didn't really respond. Uh, didn't come over, so he just he he was on a mission and walked off. After seeing him earlier, I thought he was with that doe, but uh, obviously to come out of there by himself, she's not in heat yet. So, anyway, it's it's crazy to see him three times in one day, three separate instances, and um, and we're gonna we're gonna stay after him. We'll see you guys tomorrow. down at the river bottom farm about to head out to the set it's november 4th nice and cool about 33 degrees we are going to head to the poseidon set which is the south side of the central timber it's just a great spot we had lots of encounters with fitz magic there last year it's the uh, edge of a big bedding area and the deer all just filter back in there and there's lots of chasing and pressures on the rise with this north wind and uh, after our three encounters with him yesterday, he's very active on the farm and fingers crossed he'll come in bow range this morning. the deer beginning to filter back to the bedding area, Mike and Rye scanned the river bottom in front of them. That same morning, 118 miles to the southwest, Drake Lamb is back on stand tucked between multiple known bedding areas. True to form, the morning greets him with the kings of spring. He's coming. He's coming. You see him? Straight ahead. I'm almost positive it's him. I'm 95% sure it's him.
good? Yes. Mate, mate. Smoke them, buddy. You go down right there. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Brother, first deer we seen this morning is the white eight that we had a freaking five yard encounter with. And he's dead right here, 25 yards. Yeah. Yeah. deer after, we just hard shot him after all that crap we freaking been through. That's a giant freaking egg right there. I mean, perfect. Got turkeys gobbling right here, dude. The kid doesn't get any better. I saw a deer clear across the creek right here, and it was Jenna's buck. Blew up the scrape like November 4th. This is, uh, like it hasn't even hit me yet, but like, just, we just had an epic hunt. Like, one of the best hunts. Oh man, that hit me. Kind of in here on a whim of, you know, one of these bucks come cruising through here and uh, perfect access, skips T aside this timber. I mean, this is the most beautiful timber that me and Justin have ever been in. Different stages of TSI, just all kinds of brows in here, just perfect. But we slipped in from the top, came right down in. We call this the hornet's nest because we're right in, I mean, we're right in the middle of the farm and skip. You know, we preach that, hunt the edges then dive in. This is the time to be diving in. And that's exactly where I right there. We got a giant eight on the ground, November 4th, 744. And I'm tagged out and I'm freaking jacked, man. That couldn't have been any more perfect. Grunted him in like across the creek, blew out a scrape right. He's on the ground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hit him with the, uh, I hit him with the new grunter. And he did it. <laughs> and he did it. <laughs> How about this? Not that we can help on a track job, but we're gonna get ready and head down your way. Yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll wait for you. Alright, well, just got to the ground and this is one of the best parts about tagging a buck. And one of the worst parts when you see him go down is you gotta wait for all your buddies, because this is definitely a team effort. Skip for sure. He's been gracious enough to let me and Justin hunt here and come out here and work and learn from him. And that's, you know, me and Justin are just, is ingrained in this habitat management and this, everything that goes into harvesting these big deer, me and Justin are just ate up with. And we, uh, the stars aligned, we kind of aligned with Skippy with our new habitat management business. And I mean, this is just the pinnacle. This is exactly why we love doing what we do. It's not about killing the animal, it's about growing these things, letting them have the best life that they possibly can. These entry exit routes, all the strategy that goes into these bucks, man. I mean, that's that's why we do what we do. It's not about killing these things, it's about everything else that, that goes up to it. So we're gonna go back and not go after this deer. We're gonna go get the boys and it's gonna be a team effort on this one. So we'll see you in a little bit. Didn't say sweet November because he almost didn't. What's well, sweet now? Sweet enough now. Oh yeah, dude, that's gorgeous. Alright, well, got the crew, got Scoob, Justin, Skippy, finally got out of bed this morning, pulled him out of there. We're gonna go look at him. He's right here. We just got back to the tree. Justin did go over here and put his coat on him before we left, just so the coyotes didn't get to him, so. We should be good. He's right here, so. Ooh, boys. Holy cow. <laughs> Look at this thing. 
That's a giant eight. Deer rear in here after. Skippy called it. He's like, ah, that might be a good spot in the morning. And we saw him, uh, well, the first encounter we had, what? September 26 or something? You season. Yeah, Justin's sister, we took her out. And uh, she actually hit the deer somewhere. We had blood and tracked him forever. Didn't end up finding him. And then uh, Skip texted us, I don't know, what was it, two weeks after that probably. And you're, he, was, he was just mind blown. The deer showed up and then uh, Justin shot his buck. We had you know kind of a fiasco with that, unfortunately. And then uh, we were in here two days ago looking for Justin's deer. And I, I seen this guy on the other side of the creek and I snort wheezed at him and he kind of, he came in and blew out a scrape and just some of the coolest, one of the coolest encounters I've ever had deer hunting. So we came in this morning, we hunted this spot a couple days ago. It was down in here in this gorgeous TSI that Skip's done. And what is this, 10 years old? Some, some yeah. kind of different stuff. But I mean, just gorgeous in here. Tons of new regen, regrowth. Just, I mean, as good as it gets for a morning spot and down in here in the bedding. and. Saw him across the across the creek, pulled out that grunt call, and he came right in just like he did yesterday. And it's just like to to call in a deer two days in a row, or you know, a day apart, and just nuts. But that's time of the year, November. So come and get your hands on him, boys. Oh, dude. Look at this thing. Yeah, that's a beast. Dude. He a got definitely a lot bigger than that right there, man. We have a sheds too. He got way bigger. Oh my, he's just a monster. Just a hammer of an eight. So my wish is, is that everybody gets a chance at hunting a mature deer like this. It shouldn't be just Iowa. It shouldn't be just maybe Kansas and being fewer in Kansas. There's, there's no reason that every state shouldn't have at least a few mature animals in, in every neighborhood for guys to chase. So Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, down the list. There's, there's just a couple little regulation choices we have to make. And if we keep listening to the same people, making the same excuses for making things worse or not changing, it's never going to improve. And, and I just think it's better for the whole herd and it's better for, for anybody chasing these mature animals across any state to be able to at least have a few of them there and get the age structure there. So it will literally benefit everybody. I want to see this in every state be able to chase deer like this. Yeah, I can feel the starfish. Like this whole thing is broken right here. Feel that. It's crazy. Got him hung up. Josh was in here kind of overlooking him, and this is the deer that Jenna shot back in September, and this was the side that we shot him on. We found the entrance right here of the muzzleloader bullet. You're like an inch from the heart, man. Perfect. I mean, you guys told me. I told her to put it on the heart. He was 120 yards, and like, uh, it was perfect. I told her to put it on the heart. She's she's just she's she's money. She doesn't have the target panic like she'll slowly execute. Like I have all the confidence in the world with her behind the gun. And we were really going. I mean, after everything that happened, like we found some up. blood. It literally looks like you got stitched up. The things that these animals can live through is really it's a game of inches. While we celebrate Drake's big buck success back on the river farm, Mike and Rye are still on stand. It's a big old doe. as far as like chasing or really aggressive behavior, but they're all just meandering around in here. It's the perfect morning for this stand. You have this very light north wind and just thermals rising. And this is a spot where you get deer on all sides of you, so it's working out very well so far. Hopefully Fitzmagic shows up. Yeah, that's him. 
hang on here, here. Get in the slough. It's about 12:15. Where I said big doe on the on the lane, and I got her in the glass, and she looked back behind her, and right away we see this this uh, buck we call Tony, and uh, it's a buck that Rye has been contemplating whether or not he wants to shoot it. <laughs> it was a tough decision. Realistically, though, like for my stand, I don't have anywhere. There's one small gap we could have shot through, but. It would have been a challenge to get the camera arm out of the way and get Mike's bow, and I didn't make the decision fast enough, so. It's definitely, this is a tough stand to do the switcheroo in. It was neat, though, because he's over there with that big doe, grunt at him, do a little snort wheeze. He looked real hard, pawed the ground a little bit, and he just worked his way through the slough here. And then I hit the rattle and antlers together, and he just right away turned around. I could see him running back, and he came right back through it. 25 yards, but definitely got me fired up. <laughs> <laughs> Big body on him, cool encounter for the middle of the day. It's always fun to see. That's a giant freaking egg right there. I mean, perfect. We got turkeys gobbling right here, dude. The kid doesn't get any better. Bucks are doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're coming up here 15, 20 yards, so it gives me a lot of confidence. Seeing a big buck out here, he's probably gonna come out the same trail and present a perfect opportunity. After seeing him earlier, I thought he was with that doe, but uh, obviously to come out of there by himself, she's not in heat yet, so. Anyway, it's, it's crazy to see him three times in one day, three separate instances. And, um, and we're going we're gonna to stay after him. And uh, I think we have a pretty good chance of catching up with him here pretty soon if, if it stays like this. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Just a few days into this high stakes chess match, Mike Reed has seen his top buck not once, not twice, but three times with one unfolding just out of bow range. Out searching, the Fitzmagic deer is alone, and this is exactly the kind of scenario we all seek. Just ask Drake Lamb, who ended his dream hunt with a perfect heart shot. Transitioning from the ground encounter to the massive frame in hand in only a few days, these are the moments that showcase why all hunters hit the field dreaming big each and every day. Nothing beats celebrating friend success, but those with tags still in hand must look ahead, refocus to make a call of their own. There's no better time than today, and in the blink of an eye, the chase could be charging towards the tree that's been saved for this very occasion. These are the good times, and day by day, we are 
Chasing November.